Greetings, YouTubers, and welcome to my 19th TTM video. This is the Bicentennial Show. The giveaway. Get those flags there. The Spirit of 76, and they don't tread on me. 200 subscribers. I call it the Bicentennial Show. We're going to have the giveaway at the end. I want to thank everybody for subscribing. We're up to 250 now, so we get those 50 more. And we'll have the tricentennial giveaway. Also, I had two in-the-mail purchases come today. And I also had four TTMs come as well. So, let's get started right away with the first purchase that came in. It is a Hall of Fame card. Football postcard, that is. Whatever you want to call it. And this guy charges quite a bit to send through the mail, TTM. So... I decided to uh, purchase this on the uh, the internet, and I got a great deal. That's Mr. Lance Allworth. Lance Dwight Allworth, 80 years old, born August 1940 in Houston, Texas. He was raised in Hog Chain, Mississippi. I love that name. He earned 15 letters while he was in high school, and then attended the University of Arkansas up there in Fayetteville. He was a track star at college in the long jump, the 100-yard dash and the 220-yard dash. He ran the 100 in 9.6 seconds and ran the 220 in 21.2 seconds, so he was fast. He was offered contracts to play baseball by both the New York Yankees and the Pittsburgh Pirates. Turned them both down, stayed at Arkansas to play football. He was All-American in 1962. In the drafts that year, the AFL and NFL drafts, in the NFL draft, he was selected in the first round with the eighth pick by the San Francisco 49ers. In the AFL draft, he was selected in the second round with the ninth pick by the Oakland Raiders. However, Oakland decided to trade his rights to the San Diego Chargers. In exchange, they got halfback Bo Robertson, quarterback Hunter Enos, and offensive tackle Gene Soloski. Uh, I think the Chargers certainly got the better of that deal. I'd never even heard of those three guys. No offense to them. He eventually signed with the Chargers, where he had a great Hall of Fame career with them. His slender build, his speed and leaping ability earned him the nickname Bambi, same as the, uh, the famous deer from the movie. He played football from 1962 to 72. Played with the Chargers from 1962 to 70. In that time frame, he won an AFL championship in 1963. Seven times was an AFL All-Star. He was AFL Player of the Year in 1963. Three times led the AFL in receiving yards. Three times led the AFL in receptions. And three times led the AFL in receiving touchdowns. He was a member of the AFL All-Time Team as well. He played with Dallas Cowboys from 1971 to 72. He wound up winning a Super Bowl, Super Bowl VI. I remember the Cowboys when they defeated the Miami Dolphins. Made the NFL's 75th anniversary all-time team and the NFL's 100th anniversary all-time team as well. He had 542 receptions, 10,266 receiving yards, and 85 touchdowns. 85 receiving touchdowns. He's a member of the Arkansas Sports Hall of Fame, the University of Arkansas Hall of Honor, College Football Hall of Fame, and in 1978, the Pro Football Hall of Fame. That's Mr. Lance Allworth. That was a good price. Had to get it. This next one. Purchase. Well, it was a gift, actually, from my wife for our wedding anniversary. She ordered this a while ago. It was through a TriStar private signing. Just recently did. And this baseball was signed by the newest member of the Baseball Hall of Fame, Mr. Larry Walker. Signed the Hall of Fame and Scribe Baller in 2020. I saw the price she got this at. This is really good price. Really low, and I imagine it'll be a lot higher when I see it on eBay from other people. Larry Kenneth Robert Walker Jr. is 53, born in December 1966 in Maple Ridge, Canada. Growing up, he didn't play too much baseball. He liked hockey. Played a lot of street hockey growing up in a group that included a future Hall of Famer by the name of Cam Neely. Became his close friend. He grew up dreaming of playing in the NHL as a goalie. Larry Walker's boyhood idol was goalie Billy Smith of the New York Islanders. 
Man, that was the goalie for their Stanley Cup run in the early 80s. His brother Carey was drafted by the Canadians in the 12th round in 1977. At 16, Larry Walker was offered tryouts with junior A teams, but was cut each time. In 1984, he was playing in the World Youth Championship in Saskatchewan, playing baseball when Montreal Expo scouting director Jim Fanning saw Larry Walker and hit a home run. Yeah, home run, you say? Yes, but he hit it with a wooden bat. Everybody else was using an aluminum bat, and that impressed Fanning enough to sign him as an amateur free agent. Sign Larry Walker for $1,500, which today is about $3,691. His career went from 1989 to 2005. He played with the Montreal Expos from 1989 to 94, and then went to Denver, Colorado, where he played with the Rockies from 1995 to 2004, and then finished up with the Cardinals, 2004 to 2005. His first Major League game was August 16, 1989. He had two walks in his first two at-bats, and then in his first official at-bat, got a single off Mike Lacoste of the San Francisco Giants. His rookie year, he batted 170. Not a great average, but in his career, he hit 313, had 2,160 hits, 383 homers, and drove in 1,311 runs. Five times he was an all-star, seven-time gold glover, three-time batting champ, and led the National League in home runs once. In 1997, he was the National League MVP, where he hit 366, 49 home runs, 130 RBIs, 208 hits, and 33 stolen bases. And he was elected to the Hall of Fame this year in 2020. Of course, there's no ceremony. They might have one next year, I guess, if things get better. But this is a great ball, and it was a great gift. And I always thank my wife for that. Now, the TTMs I got. Let's get to that. First one came from Wisconsin. It was 10 days. There was no fee with this one. It's a... Hall of Fame baseball postcard that was signed by Hall of Famer Bud Selig, the commissioner. Alan Huber's Bud Selig, 86, born in July 1934 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Graduate of the University of Wisconsin at Madison with a BA in American history. He was one of the owners of the Milwaukee Braves, a minority owner, and he did not want the Braves to leave Milwaukee. If they had come all the way from Boston, they were there for years, and tried to stop the Braves from going to Atlanta, but was unsuccessful. So he put together a group to try to get another major league team into Milwaukee. In 1969, he and his group tried to purchase the Chicago White Sox, and they were going to move them to Milwaukee. But the sale was vetoed. I think the owners did not want uh, the White Sox leaving the south side there. So in 1970, Sea League and his group purchased the bankrupt Seattle Pilots of the American League. They played one season in Seattle. Sea League and his group bought them and moved them east to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. There they stayed. Under Sea League's ownership in 1982, the uh, the Brewers made the World Series. American League champs only to lose to the St. Louis Cardinals in seven games. A very good World Series. The year before, they'd uh, made the playoffs in the strike-shortened season in 1981. He was acting baseball commissioner from 1992 to 98, and then he stopped acting. He became the commissioner in 1998 and served until 2015. He got elected to the Hall of Fame in 2017. So again, this was 10 days. There was no fee for Bud Selig. Next one is a basketball college legend. Certainly was. And I sent him two cards. He signed both. He also signed the index card. And that is the great Austin Carr. Get him in there a little bit more. Sign that card, the upper deck, and the tops one. It's like the upper deck there. I like those old Cav uniforms. And he signed the index card as well, all in gold with his number, 34 on him. Austin George Carr, 72. Born March 1948 in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. Went to Mackin Catholic High School in the nation's capital. He had 2,000 points as a high school player. And then went to the Golden Dome. Notre Dame, 1968-71 to 71 he played. Scored 2,560 points. Fifth all-time in college basketball. Averaged 34.5 points a game for the Irish. Holds the NCAA record in a tournament game for 
points in one game. He scored 61 against the University of Ohio 50 years ago in 1970. He also had the most field goals in one game with 25, and that was all before the three-point shot came about. So imagine if he had the three-point shot. He'd scored a lot more. His record scoring edge of 50 points per game in seven games in the NCAA tournament is still a record that stands today, and who knows who could break that. In the 1971 drafts for the ABA, he was selected by the Virginia Squires. And in the NBA, he was selected in the first round, number one overall by the Cleveland Cavaliers. And that's who he signed with. His career lasted from 1971 to 1981. Played with Cleveland, the Dallas Mavericks, and the Washington Bullets. His longest stint was with the Cavaliers in 1971-80. A lot of injuries in his career, especially his rookie year. He scored 10,473 points, about 15.4 a game. He had 1,990 rebounds, which is about 2.9 a game. And had 1,878 assists, about 2.8 a game. He was a college player of the year in 1971. Made the all-rookie first team. And then was the 1974 All-Star. He's part of the miracle at Richfield with the Cavaliers when they won their playoff series, I believe, over Washington. And he's a member of the College Basketball Hall of Fame. Again, this was eight days. There was no fee. This came all the way from Ohio. And he signed it all in gold. So I guess, you know, tell me where he went to college. But I heard he knew that. One of my all-time favorite college players. This next one also came from Ohio. We got an Ohio thing going here. A basketball player who played with the Cavs. He signed two cards. Didn't sign the index cards. But, you know, I live. I'll live. There's not a problem. That's Mr. Jim Jones. James Burnett Bunny Jones, 70 years old, born November 1949 in Racine, Wisconsin. Attended Marquette University in Wisconsin there, 1970 to 72. He was an All-American in 72 as well. However, he left Marquette to pursue a pro career in the ABA. He was only the second player, I believe, at the time in NCAA history to leave for the professional game. Spencer Haywood, I think, was the first one. Uh, The Nets offered him a contract with good money, but it stipulated that he had to sign the contract, accept it within a few days of getting it, and he had to leave college. Couldn't stay there. So, money talked, and he went. He played from 1972 to 1982. Played with the Nets, New York Nets, 1972 to 73, then the Carolina Cougars from 73 to 74. But his longest stint came with the Cavaliers from 1974 to 79, and with the Lakers, and finished up with the Bullets. He was an ABA rookie first team member in 1973, and won an NBA title in 1980 as a member of the Los Angeles Lakers, a team that defeated Philadelphia in six games. Game six, of course, very famous at the Spectrum in Philly, when Magic Johnson started a center for an injured Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. In his career, he scored 7,664 points, which was about 12.3 a game. He had 5,196 rebounds, about 8.3. And 1,079 assists, about 1.7 a game. And he's a member of the Greater Cleveland Sports Hall of Fame. Throw that in there for you. Again, 12 days, no feet, came from Ohio, signed to two cards, like those old Cavalier uniforms. It's nice. I read a book on the Cavs recently, a very good book. Mentioned a lot about him. This last one came from California. It was eight days. There was no fee. One of the best names in sports ever. Signed two football cards, Mr. Fair Hooker. I kid you not, that's his real name. Signed the index card somewhat. Put his name Fair on it. I'll get that in there. Get in there, Fair. There you go. He signed Fair on it, but... Uh, he put his last name. I guess he must have stopped or forgot. Who knows? But it was nice of him to sign that as well. <laughs> Great signature. Fair Hooker is 73, born in May 1947 in Los Angeles, California, native of the City of Angels. Attended Arizona State. In 1969, he was selected in the NFL draft in the fifth round with the 124th pick by the Cleveland Browns, where he played his whole career from 1969 to 74. He had 129 receptions in those years, 1,845 receiving yards, and 8 touchdowns. So again, fair hooker, 8 days, no fee. Great signer there. 
All right, now let's get down to the giveaway. What are we giving away again? We got an autograph photo here of Hall of Famer Mel Renfro. He signed his name as number 20 and HOF on it, 96. You get that. The winner also gets an autographed baseball postcard. The Dominican Dandy, Juan Marichal there. An extra one of those. He signed that. And then the cards. What type of cards do you get if you win? The first one is former NBA player Greg Kite, Orlando Magic. He also played with the Celtics before that. I have some stuff out to him. I just haven't heard for a while. A long time. Next up is 1960 AL Rookie of the Year, Ron Hansen of the Baltimore Orioles. Sign the card there. Also, you get an upper... This is an upper deck. I don't know what it is. But <laughs> it's a, uh, a good football card of NFL great Daryl Johnston. Great signer. I got a photo out to him, so hopefully I'll get that back soon. You get a baseball card signed by Andre Thornton of the Tribe. Cleveland Indians. Played with the Cubs before that. Nice signature there. I got two cards out to him. NHL Hall of Famer, Mr. Bra uh, Eric Lindros. Also, another uh, basketball player here, David Robinson. Playing a little saxophone in this card. NBA Hall of Famer, Naval Academy grad. Another NFL great here, Mr. Ed Two. Tall Jones. There he goes. And we also got NBA player, great player, University of North Carolina guy. First pick in the draft. Here's a Cleveland guy. Surprise. Brad Darty. And we also got from a rookie of the year on a baseball card here, Mr. Bill Verdon. Rookie of the year. Won the World Series with the Pirates in 1960. Was a good manager as well. And the last one, Super Bowl MVP, Mr. Chuck. Howley, only man ever to win the Super Bowl by playing on a losing team in Super Bowl V when his Cowboys were defeated by the Colts on a last-second kick. Now we get out the old box, the same box that was used in uh, the first drawing for the Centennial Group 100. And we've got, first in, Mets Rule. Great channel there. Melancholy Happy Trails to Mr. Tom Seaver. Passed away the franchise recently. Christopher's Cool Cards 2. He's got a good channel there. Just celebrated a birthday. We've got uh, Derek's Cards. He's got a good channel. The Hobbyist. I like that name. I like his channel as well. JR Baseball Fanatic 12. Has a good channel there. You young man. Silent Collector. I like that name also. We got Canadian Cards. Larry Walker, Canadian. TTM Mike. Check all these channels out. They got good stuff. Chris Graffs 101. Fix that. Flipped over. We got Moose Moose Coca Card Collector. Danny and Gray's Cards and Toys. Another good channel here. Poor Man Stack. We got Sport Card Collector 959. We've also got Baseball Fan 75. He won the first giveaway. He just hit 200, so congratulations to him on that. We got Sage the Collector. These are all folks that left comments in the last two videos. West Star MMG. And Briss. We got Avid Atlanta Fan. We got Hoss of Cards. A lot of good stuff as well. Willemans Trio. George the Collector. We got West Virginia's Michael Myers. Mountaineer State. Another good channel here. Clumps Cards. Got some good stuff there. Here's another good channel. Brandon Stebbins. Got Adams Card Closet. The Pac-Man. Ground Zero. We got Tony Black. 
Collector Holic. Great name here. Psyched on baseball cards. Remember the great sports. There's a guy who does a lot of great drawings on his channel there. Reindeer Studios. Another guy who's got a good channel there. Alan Twitchell. Some good stuff. Rad and Dad. Card Currency. Hmm, excuse me. Carter Confidential. And last but not least, Four Leaf Cards. Let's shake up the box. <coughs> excuse me. I shall put my hand in. Not looking. We're around, and the winner is. Mets Rule. There you go, Mets Rule. All you gotta do is shoot me your address, and I will send you the bicentennial giveaway. I hope you like it. I had to put some thought behind it there. I always tried to do that with my giveaways. And again, I appreciate everyone subscribing. Is it now at about 250, so I can get those 50 more. I'll have a tricentennial giveaway. And if you ever need any addresses, and I can help for anything, you know, shoot me something, shoot me an email or a comment, and I will try to um, send you the address or tell you the address, because we're all in this together, and it's a fun hobby, so share with everyone. Don't mind doing that at all. Everybody, stay safe. Thanks for watching. Have a good night, good tomorrow, and good night, Minnesota.